So, Gemara Shabbos, page 148. Perik Shneim Vesrim, Chavit. And we'll start just from that last line on the page before. And we can't set a broken bone. That's from the Mishnah. So Rabbi Chana from Baghdad said in the name of Shmuel, The law is we may set a broken bone. <laughs> Because the broken bone endangers the limb. Yep. I remember reading a was it a Mishnah <coughs> or a halacha? Can't remember. It said that it said that um, if you that that cutting off not it wasn't a limb it was a finger or a hand or something of someone is uh, pretty much akin to killing someone. And you have to... Oh, that's right. It was probably in, was probably in one of the bovers, maybe. Mm. Um, and you have to pay them restitution for their entire life's income because you cut off their hand. Yeah, well, I can see that. Rubber Barbara... So it would have been done by hand in one way or another then. Rabbi Baba Khana Ikla La Pumbadita. So he came to visit Pumbadita from Israel. Lo al li perke de Rav Yehuda. He did not go to a lecture by Rav Yehuda. Shadre la Ada Dayala. Rav Yehuda sent Ada, his attendant, to Shmuel, Amale, Zil Garbe. He instructed. Go confiscate his cloak until he comes. He went, he went and dragged him forcibly to him, to the lecture. Rabbi Huda sent for Ada, his attendant, and yeah. said to him, Go drag him uh-huh. to the lecture. Azil Garbe. Azil Garbe, so the official went and dragged him by his cloak? By his cloak, that's probably. Ata. And found Rav Yehuda, so he came to the lecture and found Rav Yehuda expounding, we may not set a broken bone on Shabbos, I see. Amale, Rav Baba Khana says Rav Yehuda, Hachi Amar Rav Khana Bagdadat Bagdadat Bagdadata Amar Shmuel, so says Rav Khana from Baghdad and Shmuel, in the name of Shmuel, Halakha machzirinet hashever, the law is we may set a broken bone. Amalei Rav Yehuda replied, Ha chana didan v'ha shmuel didan. Baal chana is ours and shmuel is ours. They both, they're both from Babel. V'lo shmiali, and I hadn't heard it. V'la bedina, v'la bedina, grav, grav tich. Now was it not right that I had... Now, was it not right that I had you dragged here? Did I not rightfully drag you to the lecture? And there's a nice little note on this. Everything was taught publicly in lectures and in the study hall was known to the local sages. Nevertheless, the possibility existed that a sage would teach a halachic ruling to one of his students who would in turn transmit this teacher to only a few others, resulting in a situation when other students of that sage were unfamiliar with that ruling. In this context, Rabbi Bahana, who came from Eretz Yisrael, was the only one familiar with the halachic tradition from Rav Hana and Shmuel, both of whom were Babylonians, while Rav Yehuda, who was the preeminent disciple of Shmuel, was unfamiliar with it. So, in fact, this halacha travels from Babylon to Eretz Yisrael and then back again. Okay. Until it could be reversed. Hmm. It was reversed, wasn't it? No, no. Uh, the, this wasn't reversed. But doesn't... He, doesn't re- he say, reversed the teaching of Rav Yehuda. Because Rav Yehuda oh. was saying that you couldn't set the bar. Oh. 
so I never heard this until you came and taught yep. it to us. I see, I see. Wow. Mi shenifrika yajo kule. If one's hand, uh, and the Mishnah continued, or foot mm. became dislocated, he might not massage them in cold water, etc. Ravavya. Hava yativ kame de Rav Yosef. Ravavya was sitting in the presence of Yosef. Shanya le yade. Ravavya's hand had become dislocated. Amale, and he said to Rav Yosef, Hachimai, what's the law? May, I, may in other words, may I? Am I permitted some sort of therapeutic method to uh, fix me up? According to uh, this version, he displayed Rav Avia then displayed a variety of hand positions. And he said to him, what is the ruling with regard to this? Oh, really? Am I permitted to place my hand in this way, or is it a violation of the prohibition against healing on Shabbat? Rav Yosef said to him, it is prohibited. Rav Avia again asked, and what is the ruling if I position my hand in this way? Rav Yosef said to him, it is prohibited. In the meantime, his hand was restored to its proper location. <laughs> It was on Shabbos. Yep. Am I allowed to do this? No. Am I allowed to do that? No. Oh, hang on, I feel better now. Um, An interesting little story. This way, the way it says it here is similar except for it actually says that Rav Avi's hand... Uh, oh, no, it is the same. But hang on. You first start off... You didn't start off by saying that Rav Avia's hand had become dislocated, did you? It says that. I didn't start from there. I read, started reading from further on. It starts off, Rav Avia was once sitting before Rav Yosef and his hand became dislocated. But I started reading after that with the expansion. Okay. So, Amale, Rav Yosef said to him, May Tibayla, what had been your question? In other words, why would you think any of these things would be permitted? Hatnan, was it not taught in the Mishnah? Mi shenifra kayado o raglo lo yitrepes betonen. If one's hand or foot became dislocated, he may not massage them in cold water. Aval rochetz kedarko ve'im nitrape But he can bathe according to his usual way, and if it becomes healed, it becomes healed. Amalei velotnan. But it was also taught in that same place, Ein Machsirin Et Hashever. You can't set a broken bone. Amar Rav Chana, Bagdarata'a, Amar Shmuel, Halacha Machsirin Et Hashever. The Lord is we may set a broken bone. Amalei Rav Yosef replied to him, Kulhu Bechada Mechita Mechitanhu. You wove everything together in the same way, in the same weave. Were all these woven together in a single weave? Question mark. Then he goes on explaining. Hechad itmar itmar, where uh, an amendment was stated. It was stated hechad lo itmar lo itmar, and where an an amendment was not stated. It was not stated, so you can't presume anything. Well, therefore, the ruling of the Mishnah with regard to a dislocated limb must be observed. It was stated in the Mishnah one way in regard to a broken uh, limb, and Shmuel came and ruled otherwise. Yeah. So there it was contradicted Mm -hmm. by an equal authority, Mm -hmm. or greater authority. But in regard to the dislocation, there's no further teaching that contradicts the Mishnah, Very and good. therefore the Mishnah stands. This dislocation. Mm. Okay. Hadran ala Mishnah, chapter 23, called Sho'el, which is someone who borrows. 
שואל אדם מחברו כדי יין וכדי שמן, פס מברי פיצ'ס אוף וויין, סוף מברי פיצ'ס אוף וויין, או פיצ'ס אוף אויל פרום היס פרינד און שבס, ובלבד שלא יאמר לו הלוויני, פרווידד הי דוס נוט סיידרים הלוויני, לנד איט מי. וכן, האישה מחברתה כי קרוד, in the same way a woman can borrow loaves from her friend, ואם אינו מאמינו. And if the lender does not trust him, מניח תליטו אצלו, the borrow my lady's cloak with the lender, ועושה עמו חשבון לאחר שבת, and make a reckoning with him after Shabbos. Meaning, pay it, pay for it. So you give collateral, yeah. and then get the account. As opposed to, it's not really lending anymore, is it? No. It's more yeah. curious. You actually made a loan on Shabbos. Well, this is the whole point. This is why you can't say, loan me. Mm. That's why you've got to avoid that. V'chen erev Pesach b'Yerushalayim shechol liyot v'Shabbat. So to in Yerushalayim, the day before Pesach falls on Shabbat, maniach talito etzlo, so... Someone purchasing a Pesach offering on the Shabbos may leave his cloak with the seller, but not tell at Pischo, take his Pesach offering, and pay his account after Yom Tov. And make the proper calculation with him after the festival. Yeah, I think pay his account. Well, the you, you have an account. Agreed. A Cheshbon is, I mean, now it's an account, but... Cheshbon is an accounting, really, when you think of it. So what they do is they get together and they decide on the value of the thing that was... Can they decide given. on... Oh, so they don't decide so on the on to no, So there's no business transaction as such at that time. Mm. That happens after. There's a nice uh, little note here on the borrower may leave his cloak with him. The borrower may not say that the cloak is collateral, Rather, the lender will understand the borrower's intention in leaving the cloak. Although this resembles a business transaction, the sages did not prohibit it, because the very prohibition of conducting business on Shabbat itself is a rabbinic decree. It makes a lot of sense. Gemara. Amalei Rava Barav Hanan Labaye. מאי שנה השאילני ומאי שנה הלוי, הלוויני. What's the difference between saying השאילני and הלוויני? So, הלוויני is... Stein's answer is added that makes it prohibited, question mark. So, um, they both mean the same thing. Well, they mean almost the same. Almost. It says here that, that one is used in one context. And they mean the same thing, but they use them in different contexts. There's a little note here. Oh, please. Um... Rashi and Tosfot both attempt to clarify the distinction between these two phrases. From the conclusion of the Gemara, it is apparent that the very fact that a person must be careful to use a particular expression reminds the individual that it is Shabbat, which is the purpose of the decree. An opinion cited by Tosfot notes that in some languages there is no difference between these expressions. In these languages, the borrower should simply say, give me which does not have any connotation of a loan. Mm. So, they could say... In the context that... Oh, I see. You know, when you say, give me, you're not asking for a charitable donation. <laughs> so, um, and you've got your cloak in your other hand as well, at the same time. You could just give the bloke the cloak as you're saying, give me such and such. Amalei Hashileni Lo Ate Lemichtav 
the lender will not come to write it down. Let me read you the expansion. Mm -hmm. What is different about the expression lonely that makes it prohibited? He said to him, if someone says, let me borrow, the lender will not come to write down the loan because the expression indicates the borrower intends to return the object in its current state within a short amount of time. On the other hand, the expression loan me indicates a more extended loan in which the object is not necessarily returned in exactly the same manner in which it was taken. Therefore, the lender will come to write down the terms of the loan. Mm. And it's you funny though, because the Halvani let me loan, which, as you said, is a bit of a... which means it's not returned in exactly the same way. Mm. Well, how can you borrow pictures of wine or oil from a friend on Shabbos and return them in exactly the same way? Or how can you... How can a woman borrow loaves of bread? Well, that, that, that is tackled a bit later on, yeah. the woman and the bread, because there's another aspect of the problem. So, so we'll keep going. Keep going. So I assume when it says Hashilani here, it means let me borrow, and Halvani means let me loan. I will. Hashilani. Oh. Yes. Yeah. It does. Okay. Veha kevan divchol zimnin devaye lamema le halaveni. But since on weekdays there are times when the borrower wants to say lomi, vamar le hashileni. But he says to him hashileni. But I'd like to borrow. Vela kapeid ilave. But the lender is not particular about it. Vate le mishav. And the lender does come to, come to Radyan after he hears hashileni. I beg your pardon. The Shabbat, Nami Ate Le Mithtav. So, on the Shabbat too, we might be afraid that he'll write it down when he says Hashileni. Amale, he says Rava Bar Bar, Rava Bar Rav Khanan. The Chol, oh, it's all in brackets. Do I read that? Well, yes, and this one it's not in brackets. Okay, the Chol, Deloshana, Kiamale, Halaveni Lashna Kiamale Hashileni. On weekdays, whether the borrower says to the lender Halveni or Hashileni, La Kaftinan Ilave. We're not particular with him about his terminology. About the terminology. Ate the Mirtav, so the lender will come to write it down. Beshabat, however, Kevan de Hashileni Hu de Sharule Rabbanan. Since it is only let me borrow Hashileni that the rabbis permitted him Halaveni la Sharole. They did not permit him to say Halaveni. Minkara milta. It is evident. So when he says Hashileni, it's evident what he means mm. uh, that it's a short loan. Vela atelim etzav, and he won't bother writing it down. Amale Rava bar Rav Chanan la baye mikdi. Now. I like how sometimes I think sometimes they use a bit of poetic license with their terminology, Peter, because they've used the word here mikadi, which is the same word kadi used in the first line of the Mishnah, as in a pitcher, ah. cut. Mikadi now. Amru Rabbanan called me lazy on top. The rabbi said, In all matters of Yom Tov, Kamat Shaninan. However, however much it is possible to deviate, we should deviate. Hane Nashe Demalyan Chatbayehu Maya. Therefore, those women who fill their baskets with water. My tamalu fill their pitchers with water. Sorry, I think I meant buckets. My apologies. Oh, you've got buckets there. Have you? Sorry, yeah, we've got pitchers. But it doesn't say kad. It says hanei nashe demalyan chat bayehu. I think chat bayehu is a bucket. Oh well, fair enough. Uh, 
And so, my Tamalo Meshanin. Why don't they deviate from the usual way of getting water? Mishum to Lov Shok. Because it's not possible to do it differently. Hechi Le'evde, what should they do? Demalyam Bechatzba, Rabba. Those who draw with a large bracket, Limlu, Limalu, Bechatzba Zuta, should draw with a small bracket. This should increase their walking, and that's not valid. Those who draw with a small bracket. Should draw with a large bracket. This would increase their load. I suppose in extra exertion. Nifros Sudara. If you say they spread a kerchief, yeah, over, over the top. Yeah. Ate lide schita, one might come to the act of squeezing. Nechase, nechasye, the nichtema. If you say they should cover their bucket with a lid, zimnin, demisak, the ate, the mictere. The times when the cord uh, between the lid and the bucket breaks, and one might come to tie it. Hilkach, Low shot. Therefore, it's not possible to deviate. Carry on. That may very well have been the most logical part of the entire <laughs> shas. Vama le rabba bar rav chanan labaye tnan lo mesaki which tnan is it? In beta. Lo mesapkin velo metapkin velo merakdin beyontov. You don't clap hands or beat chests or dance on yomtov. What? The ka chazenan de abdin, but we see that people do this. Velo amrinan leho velamidi, and we tell them, and we don't rebuke them. Well, the tamech, and according to your reasoning, <coughs> According to this reasoning of rebuking people, Hadama Rava, that which Rava, Rava said, Lo Leitiv Inush, sorry, Inish, Apuma de Lechaya, a person may not sit at the edge of a Lechi. This is the one that I objected to the other day. Yeah. Dilma Mi Gandar Le Chepet. Because an object might roll away from him. Ate lae tuye, and he might come to carry it back. The haka chazina nami de motve chazbe, yet we still see women place their buckets. The yasban apuma timvo, and sit them at the edge of the alleyway. The lom rinam le hu velomidi, and we tell them, and we don't rebuke them. One the ball and one the bucket. You know, we're, we're, here he says jugs or pitchers, and you're saying bucket. And I'm thinking of when I was, again, a kid in the Near East, mm. where women used to come from the well, and I've seen this, mm. with huge, of course, mm. um, earthenware pots. Yeah. on their head that were filled with water. They had a... Do you remember saying that? Mm. Yeah. They had a circle of uh, cloth on their head mm-hmm. and they walked on and they were carrying these... I suppose they were about this high with two handles, usually brown or earthen colour and they would walk along with terrific posture, absolutely straight. How is this to do with sitting? Well, no, I'm just uh, I'm just bringing this to suggest that maybe both translations are wrong in the sense that one's saying it's a bucket, mm. and this one's a pitcher. A pitcher is a much smaller thing, and that what these what we're probably talking about is these big earthenware pots of water mm. that were carried from the well. And someone's plunked it down by the front door where it's easy to get to or 
10 feet of the alleyway or was having a rest. Now, I'm just saying that the two translations are probably giving us a false picture of what we're dealing with. That's all. I'm just trying to get it, trying to figure out why this. Yeah, there's an interesting note here. Abaye, the commentators ask why Abaye bothered mentioning this case. What point does it make that was not already made? Okay, so well, it goes, it, it goes on to okay. clarify it. Elach Hanach Israel, rather let the Jews continue that way. Leave the Jewish people alone is the way he translates it. And do not rebuke them. Mutav she Yehu shokigin ve'al Yehu It's preferable that there be unintentional violators and not be deliberate violators. Mm. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Uh, it's better that they're ignorant and do it unintentionally. Yes. So in other words, we don't have the same in Jewish um in Jewish law, uh, in, in Jewish culture that um you need to be what's the what's the phrase about being aware of the law? Uh, I know what you mean. I'm trying to you know. um ignorance of the law is no, no excuse. excuse. Thank you. Savur minahane mile, they thought these words, they thought um, this, these words, uh, bidrabanan, are only in regard to rabbinic law, aval bidoraisa law. But uh, in regard to biblical law, uh, it's not the case. In other words, you do rebuke for biblical violations. The law here, but this is not correct. Loshna bidrabanam the Loshna bidoraisa. There's no difference between rabbinic and biblical law, meaning we don't rebuke either way. The heart of Sefer to Yom Hakipurim to here, uh, based on the extension of Yom Kippur, the fast, is according to biblical law. Vekach hazain and lehod zekach le veshatu ad she techeshach. Here we see people eat and drink. In this case, uh, he translates as women, and we see women who eat and drink. So, Kaka's in the hall. Is it a female verb? The Kaka's in the hall. The Achli, the Chateau, Ad, Chateau, Chateau. Oh, I'm not so sure. The Kaka's in the hall. La achli, de de kachli, maybe with the li or with the the um the e on the end. Yeah, rather than or like say to a say to a girl, titni, de achli. The male you would say titni, and women you would say titni. What was the earlier verb? Ah, it was kachazinan lehu. Oh, yeah, we see. Um, that's we see an, people. Uh, not him. Not an m ending, but an an ending. Anyway, velo amri nam lehu velo midi, and we don't say to them any rebuke. So they eat and drink until dark. So they don't start their fast at the appropriate time. Now we get to the great borrowing situation again. Vechen isha mechaverta kikarot, in the same way a woman borrows loaves from her friend. She doesn't say halveni. Beshabat ho dasir. So this on the sh- it's on the Shabbat that it's forbidden if she says halveni. Aval bechol on weekdays shapir dame. It's okay. Shall we say that Mishnah does not follow Hillel? It's not, because we learned in a Mishnah. Similarly, Hillel used to say, A woman may not lend a loaf to a friend to be repaid with another loaf. Ad, ah, 
Until, unless she assesses its value, but when she actually borrowed it or loaned it, Shema Yukro Chitin. Perhaps wheat will become more expensive, but Nimsa will be utterly day rebuilt, and the parties will be found to have come to a violation of interest. Here we've got a nice expansion. If the price of wheat rises and the borrower returns the same sized loaf of bread, she will have returned something of greater value than what she borrowed. And therefore, she will have paid interest on her loan. That just makes sense, because the same case applies with money. If you, if you say it's worth five shekels, and you return five shekels, but in the meantime, the exchange rate has gone down, or whatever, mm. it's the same, same problem. Yeah. But it wouldn't have been then. I see. That would have been a different situation. Because then. the price of wheat can change, but five shekels is five yes, shekels. Yes, exactly. From here we see that even on weekdays it is prohibited to borrow a loaf of bread from another person. Mm -hmm. yes. And now the Gemara answers that. Sorry, I just want to say I wonder if they had exchange rates between coinage in those days. It would have been done by money lenders. It wouldn't have been official. So, you know, if they had money lenders, uh, money exchanges in the temple in Jerusalem. Mm. So the people who came from other countries mm. could exchange their coinage for local coinage. And the people affecting the exchange used to make a profit. Uh, uh -huh. Or maybe they did it by gold or silver. That could only be if you're bringing solid gold and so solid silver, mm. silver bullion with you. And that's a possibility. Okay. I feel a team of Hillel. You can even say that it agrees with Hillel. In that Hillel used to say a woman may not lend a loaf to a friend unless she assesses its value because wheat will become more expensive and there will be a violation of interest. Okay, so you can even say the Mishnah agrees with Hillel. Ha, the, this Mishnah, which uh, permits lending loaves without assessing the value. But Atra, the kids to me, is for a place where the price of a loaf is fixed. <laughs> That's funny. Ha! I would never have thought of that, of that as a solution. And this ruling, Hillel's ruling, which prohibits lending, the Atra de la Kids de Me, is where a place where the price of loaf is not fixed. <coughs> nice answer. Go, Hillel. Well, actually, it's not you know, when you think about it, this was up. in... Uh, when we were in Israel, I don't know, it's probably no longer the case. But if, when we were in Israel... It is no longer the case. There was a fixed, uh, there was a type of bread mm. was produced by the bakers at a price fixed by the government, yeah. which was set at a rate that any person, no matter how poor, yeah. could afford bread. Yeah. I remember that too. I think I remember it here in Australia too. Maybe not in my time, but... They, the, the price of bread used to be fixed when I was a, uh, a kid. Fascinating. Yeah. <coughs> the email or mami no, and if lender does not trust him. So that was what was said in the Mishnah. I think the Mishnah in Beta. Itmar. Ah, oh, no, that was in this Mishnah, where the lender doesn't trust, mm. then you leave the cloak. Itmar halva'at yom tov. A loan in Yom Tov. Rav Yosef Amar. Lo nitna litava. It is not reclaimable. In court. What? The cloak? No, the loan. Of a loan. Cannot. You can't try and get it back by going to court. Aha. Uh the -huh. Rav Amar. Nitna litava. It is reclaimable. Rav Yosef, Amar lo nitna litava, Rav Yosef says, it is not reclaimable. Di'i amrat nitna litava, because if you'll say it is reclaimable, ate le mikhtav, the lender will come to write a record, on Yom Tov, Rabba Amar nitna litava, Rav says, it is reclaimable, di'i amrat lo nitna, because if you say it's not, lo yehivle, the lender will not give anything to the borrower in the first place. 
Ve'ate li'im li'im nu'ei li'im nu'ei no, li'im nu'ei me simchat yom tov and the barrel will come to be prevented from enjoying yom tov. So we have a problem. <coughs> Tanan. Imei no ma'am ino maniach talito et zlo if the lender doesn't trust him the barrel may leave his cloak with the lender. I amrat bishlama lo nitna litava this is understandable if you say that it's not reclaimable. Mishum hachi maniach talito et zlo that is why the borrower would leave his cloak with a lender. And make a reckoning with him after Shabbos. Ela i amrat nitna litava. But if you say the loan is reclaimable, amai maniyat talito etzlo. Why would the borrower leave his cloak with a lender? Litain lay. Let the lender give the borrower whatever he needs without security, without collateral. Lit be and. Let the lender claim payment from him in court. Amar, the lender might say, Lo, be'ina, de'lekum, be'dina, be'dayana. I don't want to get involved with litigation and judges. Good point. And he's added he may prefer taking collateral so that he will not need to go to court at a later time. Yep. Although, I, when I first read this, I first thought that reclaimable meaning when he gives me his cloak, mm-hmm. he needs to get the cloak back. So we're assuming honesty on the side of the lender, but not assuming honesty on the side of the borrower. Because what happens point. if he says, I don't want the money, I like this cloak. Well, you would imagine there would be a machloket there, an issue there. Yes. He would need to write down that he... write. Give me an IOU! Or just write me that I gave it to you for... I think the presumption is that there's a rough equivalence in value between the two things. So if he won't give the cloak back, then the lawyer has the money. You know, the borrower doesn't have to return the money. Mm. There has to be an exchange. If one refuses to exchange, the other one's left with what he got in the first place. And if there's a rough equivalent in the value of the cloak and the money, then they're quits. Mm. Mm. That's only my suggestion. It's nothing that I've got it from Steinsold. Matif Ravidi Bar Avin. So we have another Mishnah, mm-hmm. which is in Shvi'it. Hashachet et hapara, the chilka berosh hashana. So one who slaughters a cow and apportions it on rosh hashana. Im haya chodesh me ubar if the preceding month was full, meaning a full thirty days. Meshamet shmita cancels their debt. Oh, 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 I say. Avid Steinsaltz's expansion when you get to the end of this. What? Okay. All right. The uh, imla, but if the law was not full. Eino Meshamet. Shemitah does not cancel the debt. Good. Now, Rav Idi Bar Avin raised an objection to the view of Rav Yosef based on a Mishnah pertaining to one who slaughters a cow and divides it among purchasers on Rosh Hashanah of a year that follows the sabbatical year, Shemitah. <coughs> Even during the times of the Temple, they were already celebrating two days of Rosh Hashanah the first day was possibly the last day of the month of Elul, and possibly the first day of the month of Tishrei, which is the actual date of Rosh Hashanah. Mm. The question therefore arises as to whether those who brought the meat of the cow initiated their debt on the final day of the sabbatical year, mm-hmm. in which case the debts would be cancelled, or whether the transactions took place on the first day of the following year, 
in which case the debts may still be collected. The Mishnah said that if it becomes clear that Elul of the previous year was a full 30-day month, the sabbatical year cancels the debts because the very end of the sabbatical year cancels the ability to collect all previous debts. And if this was not the case, and the first day of Rosh Hashanah was actually the first day of the new year, the sabbatical year does not cancel the loan. I think that expansion mm. sets it out clearly. Yeah, very clear. Right. Shani Hatam, it's different in this case. De Igalai Milta de Cholhu, because it transpired that it was contracted on a weekday, not Yom Tov. <laughs> well, that's like. Fifty words that just all of a sudden became useless. Well, this is no. It starts here. The ilo nitna is where this one starts off. The ilo nitna. Move your hands. Maybe it's something that's not in yours. Hang on. Show me a term. Okay. It is not. We are missing that first line. That first question. Manishamit. Manishamit. Shani term. Okay. So you have an extra one, two, three, four, five. You have an extra six words for free. Which says the Elon is now litava my meshamet if uh it cannot be claimed in court what does it mean when it says cancel? Which is a good question. If something can't be claimed then it, there's nothing to be cancelled. Yeah. And it's simply that that uh, it was a different case because it transpired that it was a weekday, not Yom Tov. Yep. I'll just read the note here. The day observed as Rosh Hashanah was actually not Rosh Hashanah, but the last day of the previous year. Although that day was treated as Rosh Hashanah, its real status was not certain. Rabbi Yosef's ruling that loans made on Yom Tov are not reclaimable in court applies to a day that is certainly Yom Tov. Okay. Tashma Misefa, come learn from the last part of that Mishnah. Im la veno meshamet, if Elo was not full, so it wasn't a Shemitah year, Shemitah does not cancel the debt. I am rat bishlama nitna litava, this is understandable if you say a loan made on Yom Tov is, it's understandable if you say a loan made on Yom Tov is reclaimable. Right. Hainu de Katane Eno Meshamet. That is. That's what it means when the mission says. Shemitah does not cancel. Right. Ella. But. I amrat. If you say. Lo nitna litava. It's not reclaimable. Amai Eno Meshamet. What does it mean when the mission says. Shmita does not cancel the debt. Mm. <coughs> so the Mishnah means, if the debtor gives the creditor payment, shakil, the creditor may take it. Okay, I'll read his expansion. Okay, after does not cancel. In any of this, <coughs> the lender cannot make a claim on it in court. The Gemara explains, a loan given on a festival cannot be claimed in court, mm. but since it has not been cancelled, if the borrower gives him the money, he may take it. Yeah. So, 
So it's the people behave in a decent fashion. That's right. Precisely. And then that's expanded. You do what is expected of you. Mikhail Duresha. Oh, I so, so the debtor can always say to the creditor, I was, you don't owe me anything. Hmm. But no. Let's, you know, well, in, in act effect, in, a, in a... That's what uh, they say should be the practice. What? That the uh, debtor not the, letter, the purse creditor. Yep. Creditor. The creditor should say, "You don't owe me anything." Immediately before the other person gives him the, the money. That's how he should. Is. Yep. That's but on know. the other hand, it says here in the note, it means that the creditor is not required to refuse the payment. Exactly. So he doesn't have to say. You don't owe me anything. You can say thank you. You can say thank you, but I, I think it comes out as we could see through this that it, it's sort of more nicely finished. If okay. Mikhail de Reisha, <laughs> that implies that in the Mishnah's first case, where the debt was cancelled by Shmita, e yahiv le, if the debtor gives the creditor the money, lo shakil, the creditor may not take it. Question mark. Uh, not necessarily, mine's more of an exclamation, but uh, I, yes. I, it makes more sense, I think, with mm. the question mark. Reisha, in the first case of the Mishnah, of the Mishnah where the Shemitah cancelled the debt. Tzarich l'meimar le'meshamet ani, the creditor must say to the debtor, I relinquish, so in other words, don't bother paying the debt. No, I relinquish my claim. It's not saying, not quite saying don't okay. pay the debt. He's saying, I give up on this. Yep. Okay, I relinquish the debt. Safer, but in the last case of the Mishnah, where the Shemitah did not cancel the debt, Lord Tarikh Lamemar Le Meshamet Ani, the creditor does not need to say to the debtor, I relinquish the debt. Of course not, because if the in the second case, because there was no applies, cancellation, it's a, exactly there's no termination because there's the first day terminated. Day, exactly. Kedidnan, as we learned in the Mishnah, Hamachazir Chov Ba Shviit. If one repays debt during Shviit. So that Shvi'it is Shmita. Yeah, sabbatical year. So, as well in the Mishnah, one repays the debt during Shvi'it. Yomar lo meshametani. The creditor should say to him, I relinquish the debt. The imamar lo afal pichen. And if the debtor replied to him, even so, I want to return the money to you. Yekabel mimeno, the creditor can accept from him. Mishum shnemar. Because it says, Veze Devar Ha Shmita. And here's a long expansion on that. This is the statement of the relinquishment. Every creditor shall release that which he has lent to his neighbor. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or uh, brother because the Lord's sabbatical year has been proclaimed. That's Deuteronomy. The man of the release, Devar Hashmita, can be rendered. The statement of release, the sages derive that although the creditor must verbally release the debtor from obligation, if the debtor persists in his desire to repay the debt, the creditor may accept payment. If, however, the loan was made after the sabbatical year, as is the case in the latter cause of the Mishnah, the creditor need not verbally release the debtor from obligation. Mm-hmm. Well, we know that's obvious at last. But anyway. Ravavya Shakil Mashkana. Ravavya would take collateral. Ravavar Ula Ma'arim I Arume. Ravavar Ula 
would employ you? What's the word you use there? Well, here it says would circumvent. Circumvent. The right. issue by taking something from the borrower right. after the subterfuge. Yeah. After the conclusion of the festival and holding on to it until the repayment of the loan. Mm. So the moment the festival's over, he goes off and grabs a cloak or whatever. Chenere of Pesach, so too. The day before Pesach, so the Mishnah said, so too with the day, when the day before Pesach falls on Shabbat. The purchaser of the Pesach offering may leave his cloak with the seller, take his Pesach offering and make a reckoning with the seller after Yom Tov. Ama Rabbi Yochanan, Mahti Shadam Pisro Beshabbat, a person may consecrate his Pesach offering on Shabbos. The Chagigato be Yom Tov and his Chagiga offering on Yom Tov. Name a Messiah, lay, let us say, following support of Yochanan, the Chenner of Pesach, Yerushalayim Shechol, the Yoth Beshabbos. So too in Yerushalayim, the day before Pesach, when the day before Pesach falls on Shabbat, Maneach Talito et Law, he may leave his cloak with the seller, but not tell it Pischo, and take his Pesach offering, or say, Mochesh Ben Lacha Yom Tov, and make a reckoning with the seller after Yom Tov. Hacha Bamayat Kinan, what are we dealing with here? The Mamena, sorry, the Mamene, the Mamne, Acherim Imo Al Pischo, with one who enrolls others along with himself in his Pesach offering. Demekara Mikadesh Vekaye, so that from before Shabbos the animal stood consecrated. Because you can't consecrate it on. Shabbat. I see. So the Paschal lamb has to be consec, and I think we're talking particularly of a case where so you join Pesach me. starts immediately, you know, on Saturday night. So you have to have picked out the lamb be and consecrated it. So you, there's a group of people doing their doing their Pesach offering mm. as a group. All on one, as a group. on on one mm. offering, yeah. and someone comes along and says, "Can I join in?" And they say, "Give us your cloak." Or it could be, and you can share. It could it. be one person. You've got your dealer who's holding um, Shabbat, uh, not Pesach lambs. So they're all, <coughs> so they're effectively being consecrated or dedicated for Pesach by the dealer. So the person comes to him before Shabbat and either pays it to him or gives him a cloak as uh, Mm -hmm. collateral and then involves other people come to him Mm -hmm. and involve themselves in him in the ownership. So on pace, on Shabbos. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what's going on. Anyway, we'll continue. You know, Let's go. Did you want to say um, in a case where one registers others to participate with him in bringing his Paschal lamb, he expands it. In other words, the case is not one in which a person consecrates a previously unconsecrated animal, but rather a case in which one allows others to join him in registering for an animal that was already consecrated from the outset. Beautiful. Vaha Anantanan, but we learn it in a Mishnah. E, sorry, Ein Nimnim, Ein Nimnim Al Habehema, but Chila Biyomtov, people may not be enrolled initially to purchase the meat of an animal on Yom Tov. So it's forbidden to purchase an animal or sharing one on Yom Tov for Shabbos. That's curious. Shani Hacha. This case is different. Cave under regulates law. Since the person seeking to enroll was accustomed to with a member of this group previously, previous years, command imne be meikara dame. He's considered as one who was enrolled from before Shabbos. Aha. So he has a history. Hmm. But Hatani Rabbi Hoshaya, but Rabbi Hoshaya is taught 
Halacha A person may go to a shepherd who is accustomed to him. Uh, to whom he normally goes is the way this book Yeah, lo lepischo, and the shepherd may give him a lamb for his Pesach offering, or maktisho viotsebo, and the purchaser may then consecrate the lamb and fulfill his obligation with it. And he's expanded. Which shows that you can consecrate it on, on Shabbat. Shabbat. Right. Hatam nami, in that case too, cave under regular law. Since the shepherd was accustomed, uh, to sing in previous years, Akdushe uh, Makdish Le Mikara. The shepherd already consecrated that lamb for him from before Shabbos. That's nice. Vaha mm-hmm. Makdish Katane, but the Bryce states, He, purchaser, consecrates the animal. Hektish Ilui Midrabanan. Consecration is only a rabbinic elevation of the animal status. Uh, the Gemara answers, this is not an actual sanctification in the normal sense, but rather consecration by valuation. Ah. Okay. And there's a halakha here. One may not consecrate or take a valuation vow or consecrate objects for use by the priests or the temple or separate through mot or tithes. One may not consecrate animals or objects, take a valuation vow, or separate from what or tithes on Shabbat or on a festival, because these resemble commercial activities. So that's the halakha as it's laid out in about half a dozen authorities. So I think we need to go on a bit. Did Rabbi Yochanan actually say this? that one may consecrate offerings on Shabbos and Yom Tov, but Ha Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan said, Halacha Kistam Mishnah, the Halacha follows in anon- the Stam Mishnah, the anon- Anonymous Mishnah, <laughs> sorry, Utsna, and we learned in that Mishnah, Lo Maktishim Velo Marichim Velo Macharimin, we may not consecrate, no, consecrate, nor make Erech Vels, nor make Echerim, Velo Magbihin Trumot Masrot, nor separate Truma or Tithes, Kol Elu be Yom Tov Amro. All these provisions were promulgated for Yom Tov. Kal v'chomer b'Shabbos. Certainly they apply to Shabbos. So how do we resolve this? Lokasha kan b'chovat shekavua lahen zman. Here, uh, where Rabbi Yochanan permitted to consecrate offerings on Shabbos and Yom Tov, it's to obligatory offerings that have a fixed time. Uh-huh. Meaning. Could only be the Pesach offering is only done on the 14th yep. of Nisan. Kan bechovot she'en kavur lahenzman. Here, it's to obliga- obligatory offerings that do not have a fixed time, and therefore it's possible to do it after Shabbat. Oh. Mishnah, mone adam et orchav et par protav mipiv. A person may count his guests and delicacies orally. Of our law, min haktav, but not from a written note. Mephis adam im banav im benei beto al hashulchan. Person may cast lots with his children and members of his household uh, for portions of food at the table. Uvilvad shaluiz kaven lasots managadola keneged manaktana. Provided he does not intend to wager a large portion against a small portion. Metilin chalashin al hakadashim. Kodashim be Yom Tov. Koni may cast lots of sacrifices on Yom Tov. Avalo al hamanot, but not for portions. Uh, his translation of Mishnah is Go ahead, expanded and Please. a little bit different. One may count his guests who are coming to his meal and his appetizers as long as he does so from memory. But one may not read them from a written list the reason for which will be explained in the Gemara. A person may draw lots with his children and family members at the table on Shabbat <coughs> in order to determine who will receive which portion, as long as he does not intend to set a large portion against a small portion in such a lottery. Rather, the portions must be of equal size, and one may cast lots among the priests for sanctified foods on a festival but not from the specific 
the proportions. That's the thing.